Okay, so we are going to look at some real data here, some actual performance from companies that have actually disclosed performance. Now, the nice thing about this study is that we were able to obtain some policies that actually lived the test of time from consumers. Individuals we worked with that have purchased policies through the larger mutual carriers, and we were able to run an internal rate of return report to see when they opened the policy up until today's date or the end of the study period. You're gonna see 20, 30 years in these study periods and what the policies actually produced, not just projected and then who knows what happens. So as mentioned in several past videos, I have a hard time finding information or I should say getting information in terms of actual performance from anyone other than these guys. You know, these guys have consistently delivered well, I should say they consistently delivered and produced proof of performance. You know, because the big thing is when I look at a cash value life insurance policy, I don't want to buy it in any product and then have it under deliver and I'm a dissatisfied consumer then. It leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. When we see it working oh so well for these guys, my question is, okay, the proof is here. Who do they use for major mutuals? The policy is designed often with a minimum premium and a maximum PUA rider, which squeezes my insurance expenses down to the absolute minimum. It also squeezes the commissions down to the absolute minimum. This, in my opinion, is why it's not very often talked about, but it maximizes the cash value for the consumer. That's what these guys do. It's been done forever. And the thing is, anyone can obtain that. The policies we're going to show you are not policies for these guys. They're average individual consumer policies. So let's get into it. The first thing we will look at is a historical study that put several companies together. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this study only because it just shows basic whole life insurance policies with a basic premium. And the study period, 1984, through 2004. So I've got a 20 year study period. What I like about the study though, is if I look at the cash values, let's make this a bit bigger here. There we go. If I look at the cash values, I wanna see who's consistently delivered the strongest actual internal rate of return. So total cash value, illustrated IRR. So, in 1984, how'd that policy look? Much better than it does today, just where dividends were. That was slightly before the time period where dividends spiked and we saw double dividends in the 80s when interest rates were very high. But needless to say, illustrations looked very good back then. And here, we see an illustrated internal rate of return. So the IRR is the net performance on cash value after all insurance expenses, mortality charges, the net. Right, I might have a 10% dividend illustrated, but the net IRR may be 8.40%. So that's solid. What company is this? Guardian. Yeah, I'd love that. Yet the actual IRR over that 20 year span was 5.17%. Now, that's still solid for a whole life insurance product. However, that's no 8.4%. And if I purchase a policy based off the illustration, and I'm a consumer, I don't know, I think it's going to produce what's displayed, 8.4, and now all of a sudden it's more than 3% less than that. That's where setting expectations and having updated review meetings, tracking the performance is critical. But projected 8.4, still solid internal rate of return, 5% plus. We've got some other companies here. It's something when you see 5.79 projected, but NA, that means they didn't participate in the study. Here's one of our big guys, Mass Mutual. Projected 6.51, produced 487. Who else is above four? So you've got Guardian, uh, actual, when I say above four, not illustrated, you've got Guardian, Mass, New York Life, and then Northwestern Mutual. Look at this, actual, New York, 4.85, Northwestern Mutual, 
5.83. There's a time period there where Northwestern was just crushing it. Now the thing also to consider is their base premium was higher. And you will often find the higher the base premium is, the higher the internal rate of return is on a policy, slightly when you're, doing, when you're doing a comparison like this. That's why often in our studies, we like to show identical base premiums, identical P PUA allocation to make sure, okay, here's the true net result at the end of the day. But even with that said, I mean, if the premium is a thousand bucks more, like that ain't gonna result in, you know, maybe 0.1% <laughs> more, they, they were doing a, a good job and they still are. I mean, things have definitely changed a bit just as they are very conservative, but they're still one of the four major mutuals produce solid values. So that was on a 45 year old male. We see four companies, the ones we'll often refer to as the four major mutuals produce over a 4% IRR, all over four and a half percent on a 45 year old male. One other carrier came close, that was National Life with their whole life product, just under 4%. Now, let's go down and look at a 55-year-old male, same 20-year period. Now, what you'll see here, higher premiums, because these are just price-quoted policies. These are not blended policies. That's why I'm not a huge fan of this study, but it does shed some light on the fact that Here's a projection, here's what, is, what was illustrated, and then here's what actually happened. So, Guardian. <laughs> this one's actually mass mutual here. You can tell by that MM block with their old product series. Northwestern Mutual, and then New York Life. Guardian, 435. Mass, 422. New York Life. 387, so they're under, and then Northwestern, 538. And New York Life's in fourth place in this example, under 4% on the 40-year-old male, it was much stronger there. In any event, we see consistency with companies just price quoting. Again, not the way that we prefer to design policies, just price quoting for a death benefit, but it starts to sh shed some light as far as providing full transparency on who's actually delivered. And this is good stuff to be aware of when I'm trying to select the right company. So I know, okay, they're all different. They all tell me that they're the best, right? If you talk to agents that <laughs> represent or work with different companies, they're gonna give you a million reasons as to why they're the best. I did the same thing when I worked for the different insurance carriers. But now I'll state, hey, if you're paying in the same dollar amount to any one of those top four companies, you can close your eyes and pick one of them out of a hat. Very, very difficult to go wrong there. So this was a nice comparison study. What we are going to look at in the next video are individual policies. And we're gonna go through them one at a time to, act, to measure the actual input and then the actual internal rates of return. This will be fun. Hope this one was helpful. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.